Hi, I'm Pat Barkman, and today I'm going to talk about artistic touches in the garden. So one of the things that you can do is try to have three layers. In other words, we have these big old hemlocks in the background, then we have a, a variegated dogwood, and the rhododendron and the hydrangea is the third layer. I used to have a fourth layer, and that was the digitalis, but of course all of these have grown, and then they come in through where the digitalis would normally grow. So that's one thing. And over here we have some climbing hydrangea and that was to arch over the bench. And as you can see, we've made a, a tree trunk left in between the two strong tree trunks. And <laughs> I roped it to the trunk so that the hydrangea could climb on it. And that makes a nice place to sit and look at the rest of the garden when you're feeling that you want to do that. Um, as well as uh, this area, I have um, a stone wall and a stone walkway down through here and it has a shade garden in it. With foam flower, painted fern, hydrangea, climbing hydrangea going up these trees in order to make more privacy we put a bar across from one tree to another so that it would make a nice canopy over the little bench that's below and a foot stop or foot rest below that I like things that are gray and natural in the garden rather than white stone. So let's go down and see what else is growing in the shade garden. Coral bells below, bleeding heart above. Some self-starting yarrow here. And then the bridal wreath above and one of my pride and joys the wake robin which is now turned pink see in the far side are the later blooms the blooms that came out later and they're white but the ones in the foreground are pink they were white and they're in with the bleeding hearts out here I have a Ali an Ali which is a long distance point and if I open the gates of the arbor you'll see that uh, it goes down to the lake that way and then it's on this side you have a long view although there is a deer fence in there but past the digitalis you can see down a long way to a weeping cherry and a willow tree is something that adds to a garden I think it needs to have some um, density on either side of the arbor in order to make it look right, either a fence or here I have some clematis on one side and a dogwood, a piece of dogwood on the other side. And then over here I have the um, laurel tree that is now support for the clematis. It's not quite in bloom yet, but it will bloom. I can see the flowers. And then if you look down here, you see the lake. And, and some more veggie gardens, but veggie gardens aren't really artistic to look at, but, and we're talking about artistic touches today. But we have um, some structures here. The art gallery is one. Some wooden structures that are holding up tomato plants, and they will support the dahlias when they get taller. As well, we have some very large hostas that carry the statement for the, well, hostas are just fabulous little plants that don't have great flowers, but they have great leaves. I've made most of my garden have curves in it. There's the straight lines of the house and the gallery, but I like the informality of a curve. So a straight line with a curve against it is very nice. You can establish a curve 
by envisioning it if you use a hose. I, I did that for the driveway and you can see that there's a curve to the driveway which also helped with the drainage problem. In other words, I got full permission from the state to have pavers with a curve. If I had a slope like this, the water can run off on either side of the curve. So that's one reason. But artistically, I think it looks better to have some of those gentle curves that are in nature, by naturally. And I have the curve to the fence with, them, of course, the straight posts. And I'll give you a little hint about my fence. I once had very tall posts, but as the wind comes, and the wind does come off the lake and, and wobbles those fence posts so that they crack at the bottom. So every once in a while, when they've worn themselves out at the bottom, I lower the fence post and reattach the slats, the pickets on either side. So to review the inf informality is best if you can have a curve and also if you can have odd numbers. One or three for an informal garden is better than two. Um, I don't know why but it just seems that that's the way it is. And the same in the painting, when you're painting it, you like to have odd numbers more than even numbers. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please click like and do stay tuned for more of the same tips from Connecticut, Zone 6B. I'm Pat Parker.